Good evening. This video I want to uh, deal with uh, Jack Smack 77 again. He's putting more nonsense out about uh, who's saved and who's not saved. If you don't think that John 3.16 encompasses the whole gospel, you're lost. Now, you look at what John 3.16 says. It doesn't say anything. It's a promise. It's a promise for those who believe in him. For God so loved the world that, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him shall, should have everlasting life. It's a promise. It's not the gospel. Acts 16.31. That's not the gospel. What must I do to be saved? Be the Lord Jesus Christ, I shall be saved in thy, in thy household. And then the disciples went and told him more. He got to know who Jesus Christ is. He got to know what Jesus Christ did. But this is the essence of the Corsair's Gospel. So let's see what he has to say here. And he got that 16 thumbs up. Entitled, People who teach that John 3.16 is not enough to be saved are going to hell. Let's open up this prayer. And then with a few verses, all right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 10 reads, why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride doeth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire, and blesseth the covetous whom the Lord abhorreth. Now the Bible's very clear on how to be saved. And let's go ahead and just turn over to John chapter 3 and look at verse 16. The reason I'm preaching this sermon is because I'm just fed up with all these false prophets out there rejecting the word of God making it evident that they're not saved. and See, this guy claims to believe in eternal good, but everybody who disagrees with him is lost. John 3.16 reads, For God so loved the world that yeah. he gave his own... That's the motivation of why God, the second person of the triune God, became flesh, the Word became flesh, the Father sent the Son into the world, the Son became, that's who became the Son, the Word, begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yeah. Now, anyone in their right mind would not believe that, that this is not enough to be saved when having everlasting life and the promise of never perishing is tantamount to being saved. And people that teach this... That's the, this guy can't read. He uses, you know, three-syllable words, four-syllable words, but he can't read English. This is a promise. 3.14, John 3.14 is a type. It talks about Jesus Christ as a type uh, when Moses raised up, raised up the serpent. Here's the cross. That's, this is a purpose. This is a promise. For, uh, 15, for that, whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting eternal life. Go to verse 14. So you go to uh, 14, it's telling about the cross. The cross, that's a type that Moses lifted up the serpent, so he must the Son of Man be lifted up. That, there's a cross there in verse 14. And he's just got the red here. Moses lifted the serpent in the wilderness, so even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. There's your cross. But he wants to just focus on 316. These guys just rip things out of context. You can't read 316 without reading 314. They're illiterates. Garbage. These dispensationalists or hyper dispensationalists or whoever they are, these people don't believe the Bible. They don't believe. The no, we believe the Bible in context. C16 is explaining why 314 happens. You nut. 316 is telling. Why 314, the cross, happens. The purpose of the cross. Clear word of God. Now, a lot of people will argue and say, well, these people do believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, but if you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ without the promise of John 316, then you're no different than, than every Catholic out there. You're no different than every... Who says they don't believe in the promise of John, uh, John 316? 
who says we don't believe in the promise of John 3.16, you nut? <laughs> we believe in the promise of John 3.16. Now, he's talking about people who don't believe in eternal security. But people can go in heresy. People go in heresy all the time. But certainly those who are uh, reject Jack Smack 77's forceless gospel believe in terms of security, believe this promise. But 316 is explained 314. That. Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so something must the Son of Man be lifted up. That. Whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For. Four. Seventeen. Four. His purposes. Showing you why, why he did it. Fifteen is the result. That. Who shall believe in him should have a power but have an eternal life. But do I, I mean, the issue is reading, believe in fourteen. The cross. The type. You know, false prophet in every false religion out there. Because believing that alone it does not even tell you how to be saved. Okay, and my contention is that if people don't believe, believe in that alone, doesn't know, tell you how to be saved. You got to believe in the God. You got to believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and you have to tr you trust in Him. Ephesians one twelve and thirteen tells exactly that. Exactly that. The Ephesians uh, Paul's telling the Ephesians there, and he's telling them exactly what they believe in order to be saved. If the simple promise of John three sixteen, or that John three sixteen is enough, then they don't believe. Is that enough? I don't think anybody's saved. It's enough to, to get someone who's saved to believe in eternal life. If someone's already saved, then they can look at that verse and say, I have everlasting life and I can't lose it. Verse 17, But God sent not his Son into the world to condemn it, the world, but that the world might through him might be saved. And then 18. See, 18 is an excellent, ex is an excellent eternal security verse. Verse 18 is an excellent the general security verse for someone who's already been saved. In the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? Their faith is in vain and it, it's, it's just foolishness. <clears throat> now, people that don't believe in John 3.16 as being enough to be saved... Enough to be saved. Remember what he's talking about. He's saying it's enough to be saved. It can't, it can't be it's enough to be saved because the gospel isn't there. The cross isn't there. The resurrection isn't there. People are spiritually blind. They don't understand what the Word of God says. Oh, we understand very well. We can read English. We're not illiterate like you are. <laughs> first, first 15 and 16 or 17 are explaining verse 14, the cross. Okay. These people are probably reprobates. Mm -hmm. They're definitely unsaved. Mm -hmm. And I remember this one stupid theologian whose name was Tom Tom Siegel or Tom Stiegel or something. I can't remember. It's just call him Tom Stupid. Yeah, he's a guy who's a, he's a, uh, a free grace guy. And he's gone against the uh, the Wil uh, uh, Wilkin uh, St. Hodge guys. That's why he's going against the guy. But he's a free grace guy. Anyway, Tom Stupid said that believing in Jesus for eternal life was not enough. It's not enough. You gotta know what he did. That's not the gospel. Believing in Jesus. And him all the time, all the time, there's no cross, there's no cross there. At least admit you're saying it's a, it's a cross gospel. Don't come up there and say, well, I'm not teaching a crossless gospel. That's exactly what you're teaching. You're making the emphasis on eternal security and not the cross. To be saved. Well, let's just see what the Bible says about that. Turn over to 1 Timothy chapter 1. It reads in verse 16, Howbeit for this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might shew forth all long suffering, for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to everlasting life. The Apostle Paul made it clear that if you believe on Jesus Christ, you're believing on him for the promise of everlasting life. And yeah, believe on him, knowing what he did for you. This guy ripping the context out of it. You believe on him for what he did. When Paul talks about what he told the, 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 the Corinthians, he says, 1 Corinthians 3 and 4, this is the gospel I, you believe according to the scriptures. Ephesians uh, uh, 1, 12 and 13. And he's going to try to, when you believe on yeah, when you believe on Jesus, you have to know what he did for you. 
Not the fact he just gave you everlasting life, but the fact he died for your sins on the cross and was again from the dead. This theologian idiot is a total retarded fool for saying that. People that believe that John... No, you can read English. You can't. You have a screw loose. <laughs> 316 is not enough. It, would also be... it isn't enough. What are you talking about? Don't cross that. that. Any verse in John, like John 647, John 635... No single verse is enough. I'm sorry, no single verse is enough. You got to know what Christ did for you on the cross, and you got to trust in, in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. There's no one single verse that puts that all together in one single verse that I know of. I mean, someone correct me on that. But it takes two or three verses at least. And usually it takes three or four chapters. You're talking about Romans, you know, chapters one through four. I've John 6.40. I guess they would even believe that Acts 16.31 is not, it's not enough to be saved. No, either. it's not. It's not. Acts 16.31 isn't uh, enough to be saved. You got to know who just Jesus is. Because in Acts 16.32, it tells you they, they, they went, that the apostles went on to explain uh, more. This guy's really, that's amazing. These guys crack up. Sixteen thirty-two, and they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in the house. Sixteen thirty-one, they said, "Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house." Okay. And thirty-two, and they spake unto him the word of the Lord. They didn't just stop there. You say, "Believe in the Lord." They they spoke to him. They explained to him who Jesus Christ was and what he did. These people do not believe the Bible. They're unbelievers. No, no, we we'll believe us, we just read. <laughs> we are read. Unbelievers, if they've always believed that, are not saved. Now here's the conclusion of the matter. We should preach the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, but without the promise of John 3.16, without the promise of John 6.47, nobody will get saved. Because every army... What does that do anything? Without the promise. See, they're making eternal security now part of the gospel. They're making eternal security part of the gospel. And more crucial, he's making eternal security more crucial than death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And in every Catholic, every Calvinist, every Lordshipper believes in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and they're not saved. No. That's not their problem. They had works. They had works, not faith alone. See how he twists it. Their problem is they had works. With, with, the, with Roman Catholics, they're not trusting Jesus Christ as a personal savior. They're trusting the Roman Catholic Church. They're trusting the sacraments. Trusting something else. Lordship of salvation, not trusting in death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and by faith alone. They're trusting in them doing something. So that isn't the issue with these other guys. That isn't the issue with these other guys who liar. That they don't believe in eternal security. The issue is, is that they believe in, they don't believe in faith alone. So why should I believe that those who reject that John three sixteen is sufficient to save? Why should I believe they're saved? Who cares what you believe? Who cares what you believe? Because you can't read. If you could read John three uh, fourteen, you'd understand what John three sixteen is explaining. I don't. I don't, I don't care what you do. The fact is, you just brought up other issues, and those guys aren't saved because they don't believe in eternal security. They got those people aren't saved because they don't have faith alone. And that was what the free grace movement was started for, to refute the Lordship Salvationists who were adding works, a work system, into salvation. That they had to do something in order to be saved. Not the eternal security issue. Wilkin and Zane Hodge brought that up because they tried to condense the gospel into a single verse. And they tried to remove anything and said, well, what, what's the least we can say to get someone saved? And then when it came up with John 6, 47. I believe they're saved. I believe they're going straight to hell. Mm -hmm. And there's one more thing I want to add before I close. Anyone who says that John 3, 16 is not enough to be saved is essentially saying that John 3, 16 
in all 25 words, it leads people to hell. They basically believe that John 3.16 would have to read, For God so hates the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him will perish what? and won't have everlasting life. What? Now, if you want to defend these people and say that they're... What? <laughs> You're a lunatic! No! We would start with John, well, with three, uh, John 3.14 and say, Now, now children... <laughs> 3.15, 3.16, and 3.17 are explaining something that in John 3.14, and John 3.14 is a type of the cross. That's what we would tell someone in a fourth grade Bible study. A fourth grade Bible study. And they would understand that, Jack Smack. Saved, that's your problem. I don't believe for one second. That's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. <laughs> Jack Smack. <laughs> he couldn't even be a teacher of Bible, a, a kindergarten class. That's what these guys did. These guys, these guys got into a paradigm and Zane Hodge. Zane Hodge thought he could stand out little things in the bottom, you know, you know, uh, you know, and, and the gospel message out in the bottom. And, uh, that's the way I feel John 6, 47. And God would take care of the rest. St. Hyde believed that a person could trust in Jesus Christ for everlasting life and have known anything else about him and be surprised when he got to heaven about, oh, the resurrection, and Jesus Christ is my Savior. And totally shocked by it. All he was inside, you know, all he had to do was just believe in everlasting life. Jesus Christ, the promise, Jesus Christ is, uh, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you'll get everlasting life. John 3.16 is explaining John 3.14, people. <laughs> if you can read English, you understand that. These are crazy people. If you explain that to a, some young child, you explain that. You explain that's a type. John 3.14, what's the type of? What's it a type of? Oh, it's a type of the cross. It's a type of the cross. <laughs> and was it faith alone? Because it goes back, all the people had to do was look at, look on the cross, look on the uh, the way serpent. That's all they did. They couldn't do anything else. It's faith alone. And then it explains why. That's why you have you know that four four. <laughs> and three eighteen is a good eternal security verse. John three eighteen is you know excellent eternal security verse that you tell someone after they get saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed on, uh, in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And then it talks about the con condemnation. And this is the condemnation, that light has come uh, into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. And he explains all that, so, you know, uh, for everyone that uh, doeth evil, hateth the light. This is why people can save, people are lost. And neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. They don't want it, they want the truth. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be manifest that they were in God. That's a saved person. You know, so he comes in, you know, and he gets drawn to the light, gets saved, and then he starts doing uh, good things. But verse 14, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so even, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That, whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have, ever, but have eternal life. That's the purpose. But the cross... Of course, he's old. People say, well, why? So if you believe in him, you have eternal life. Four, there's your motivation. Four. God sent that son into the world to condemn him. Four. And then 18 says, eternal security. He that believes in him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And what's the name encompass? The name encompasses who the name is, the Lord Jesus Christ. But you gotta know what he did. That's what 14 is about. You gotta know what he did for you. You gotta know who he is. The Son of God. Who died for your sins on the cross. That's what the type is. That's what the Ethiopian eunuch went back to Isaiah 53, and Philip took him back and says, you know, Ethiopian says, Who, who's he talking about here? The suffering Messiah. 
Stampu tyssä. Ei mene, thank you.